Okay guys, welcome to this tutorial video on Live Chord version 2. So in this video we're going to give you an overview of the main screen and some of the various features that are available in this latest version. When you first launch the application you'll notice that, uh, that it's fairly simple, there's not a lot going on and as you load up a set list or a song the various controls will become visible and made available for your use. So this is the main screen that is used to control which chord chart is visible. Uh, it's also the screen where you will create your chord charts or create your set list or send communication to your various team members. The main screen is broken into various sections. Across the top you will notice a menu system where you can add a new song or a set list. You can open a song or a set list. You can import uh, files from various formats such as PDF or text or Word documents. Uh, you can also close the song or set list that is open and the Save As menu will allow you to save your song as a PDF, uh, a text document, or a live chord song file. If you need to export a chord chart from live chord and then take it to another location and import it into another live chord uh, installation, you could save the song as a live chord file and then either email it or put it in a Dropbox or a thumb drive or something like that take it to the location where you need to import it and once you get there copy it to the machine and use the import menu to import the song into that live chord and we'll show you how to do that in a later video also there's a set list menu this is where you can create new set list open uh, a set list edit the set list or send it out to your team members and we'll also show you that in another video. The tools menu allows you access to the team manager which is where you can maintain the contact information for all of your team members. We will cover this feature in a later video. The tools menu also allows you to use the options menu which will allow you to configure the settings for live chord. We will also cover this feature in another video. If you want to back up your live chord database you can simply click this backup database menu item and it will back up the entire live chord database including all songs, set list, settings, and your contacts all to a folder that you specify in the options and we will show you how to set that up later. Okay the next menu item is the help menu item and on this menu there is a about screen and this will show you basically who the live cord is registered to and it will also show you information such as the current version of live cord as well as the version of your database uh, and it has a few links for support and to the live cord website. Also on the help menu are a couple of new items for feedback and support. The first one, feedback, if you click that, it will launch the feedback page on our website. Use this page to give us your feedback and let us know if you're having issues with Live Chord or what new features you would like to see added. Also there is a support menu item. If you click that, it launches the support page at Live Chord. Here you can find answers to frequently asked questions. You can view the tutorial videos um, or you can simply contact us or look at the Live Chord product history to see what features are available in which versions. Okay, so the next section of the screen on the left hand side is the toolbars and set list. Many of the features that we have just talked about in the menu are available on these toolbars. The toolbars are broken into three different sections, Song, Set List, and Other. On the Songs 
uh, tool toolbar you can use these buttons to quickly add a song or edit the song that is open or to search for a song in your database the set list provides similar functionality it allows you to add a new set list or to edit the set list that is open or to search through uh, the previous set list that you have used and also to close the current set list once you have a set list open you can use this button to send that set list to all of the members uh, or to specific members in your contacts or team manager and we will cover that a little bit later and next in the other section there are a couple of buttons here that allow you to quickly get to application settings and to the team manager at the bottom of the set list are a couple of buttons that allow you to quickly add a song to a set list that is already open or to delete a song from the set list okay so most of the time when you use live chord either for a rehearsal or maybe a studio session or even a live performance more than likely you're going to be using multiple songs so on the left here this large area is the set list area and when you open a set list you will notice that all of the songs in that set list are loaded into this area and the first one is displayed for you in the chord chart area the title of the song will be displayed at the top and you will notice also that this song has an mp3 attachment uh, and we will talk about that later in another video but if you do have that then this media controller will be added uh, to the bottom which will allow you to either pick from the attachments that you have for this uh, chart or to play or fast forward uh, turn you know control your volume also you will notice there is a slider here that will allow you to control the size of the chord chart as it is displayed on the screen so if you want to make your chart larger all you have to do is click this plus button and as you click it you will see the chart is getting larger so that you can make it fill up the entire area you will also have a metronome which will show you the time and the beats per minute for the song you'll also see a key menu uh, in the bottom right corner this will allow you to change the key of the song or to transpose it all you have to do is click that menu and then pick uh, from one of the keys and it will automatically transpose to that key for you also you can display the chart in Nashville numbers so if that's if that's something you're comfortable playing with you can do that very easily to move from one song to the next all you have to do is click on the button for that song and it will automatically load that chart up these songs that I have in here are just kinda templates just to show you where the songs would be so there's actually no chart out there you can also use the keys on your keyboard to move from song to song or to even control the size of the chart and that's just to make it easier in live performance you know you may uh, not have time to reach and and find your mouse and move around so all you have to do once you have this set list loaded up all you have to do is press the keys the up and down keys and I'm just gonna press the down key and you can see that it'll go to the song two and then song four and then it'll wrap back around to the top and show you uh, the first song again and then also uh, you can use the left and right arrow keys to make this chart larger or smaller so if I press the left key you can see that chart gets smaller and then the right key will make it get bigger again okay another great feature of live chord is its ability to use multiple displays this feature is something that is built into Microsoft Windows if your computer has multiple display outputs either through 
uh, an internal dual head display card or an external USB to VGA or HDMI video display unit then LiveCord can detect those and it can actually use those to display uh, different things on the different displays. And if you notice in the bottom left corner of the main LiveCord screen, there is a little button here. And this means that LiveCord has detected a, an, a secondary display in Windows and it created a display for us to use and the way we can do that is um, we can we can click this button and a little menu pops up and we can we can click here double click on this title and we can give it a name so I've named it acoustic because this will be our acoustic guitar and and the good thing about this is a lot of times your acoustic guitar player may uh, use a capo which means he would be playing in a different key from the rest of the band and what you can do is you can actually use this menu and and say that instead of playing in A uh, this this the guitar player is actually going to be playing in the key of E and so the the secondary display will show his chart in the key of E while ever, the rest of the band is in the key of A other things that you can do is uh, just to customize this display and make it a little bit easier for you to find is you can use this list of icons um, to indicate uh, what that secondary display is used for. Um, these items here will allow you to further customize. You can actually turn the secondary display off if you want to. You can uh, choose to not show the set list on that secondary display. Um, you could choose to either show the chords or not show the chords on that uh, display and you can choose to show the control bar which is the bar at the bottom of the screen uh, and, the, and then further you can choose whether to uh, show the metronome or not so it makes it pretty customizable for the secondary display you may choose to turn everything off but the lyrics and just use secondary displays as teleprompters um, or or just to use it to show a larger screen for the entire congregation to use as a worship screen there once you have configured this screen however you like you can just click save um, or apply and and you'll see that the uh, the settings are applied to that secondary screen two other sections that I want to cover on this menu for the secondary displays is the the current song section and the message section first the current song section is used to control the size of the font on the secondary display as well as what key that secondary display is uh, showing its chart in so if you have a set list loaded and you have the first song selected the main screen will display the chart in that key and then you can click the secondary display button and once you have this menu up you can use this menu to pick what key the secondary screen will be displayed in you can also use this slider to determine the size of the font because your secondary screen may be a different size or resolution you may want to change the size of the font on that screen so that it will have a best fit uh, for that screen another great feature that LiveCord offers is the ability to send messages to either all of the screens or to a particular secondary display to send a message to a secondary display all you have to do is from this menu enter your message into this text box and click the send button your message will then be displayed on the secondary screen for the amount of time that you have specified in the application settings also if you want to send a message to all screens there's a button in the left corner here the quick message button you click that 
and then pick a message from these pre-configured messages and we will show you how to configure those later in application settings okay that's all for this video thanks for watching and check back at livecord.com for more tutorials